well, it's, it seemed morally bankrupt that we could decide, not we, but um, the Trump administration could decide to throw 800,000 young people who are here for that dream, the dream that America offers, the dream that President Roosevelt talked about in his speech. And in my own community, in my own district, District 5, I have DACA recipients. And so I'm standing here with my colleague to say, we're not going to stand for it, and we're going to stand up, and we're going to fight for these recipients, who, by the way, it's not just 800,000 people, but these people that we're talking about, this is not just statistics, we're talking about families. We're talking about children. We're talking about people who have built their lives here. They're working. They're going to school. They're helping this economy grow. And we want to say to them, we can't take you here. We don't want you here. You don't belong here. To me, this, this doesn't bode well for a country. It doesn't bode well for a community. And it's not who we are. And so I reject it. And that's why we're, we're standing here. We're going to be fighting tooth and nail you know, for, the, for, our, for our neighbors. I would say to them, look in the mirror, look in the mirror and ask yourself this one question. Is this the way you treat family? Because really and truly, this is about how you take care of your family, how you take care of people who are living, who are going to school, or doing all the right things. And is this the way you treat people who are your family? Is there anything the uh, State House is planning to do? Anything um, you've heard from leadership at the General Assembly about doing something about this in the short term or even the long term? As I was mentioning earlier, uh, clearly this is an, uh, important enough for us to come out here and speak about it today. Uh, this is something that, uh, unfortunately, we haven't had a chance to speak to Speaker Mattiello at, uh, yet, but we do have uh, uh, set some time aside for the coming days to begin to address this. and. We'd, we'd love to have something in by next week, but we don't want to rush something because it needs to be comprehensive, it needs to be approached in a delicate manner. We're talking about the lives of a lot of people here, and more than constituents, these are families. These are people who believed in the American dream, and it's suddenly upside down for them. So we want to assure them that when we look at this, we're going we're gonna to do it in a responsible manner. We want to do what's right, and if drafting something is what's right, that's what we're going to do. The most important thing here is that Congress hasn't gotten it together yet, mm -hmm. and this is a federal issue. And so for us to try to jump ahead and do something, and uh, no pun intended, be trumped by that mm -hmm. at some point because it, uh, it's, uh, it's out of our purview, or it's, it's uh, trumped by federal law, then it defeats everything we did. So we need to figure out what are our, our confines, mm -hmm. what we can legally do, and how we can protect uh, the the residents of Rhode Island who are current DACA recipients. I know there are but three we, bills that ACLU had been saying that died when the session ended that could be revived that would have a positive effect. At well, least three bills. Well, I can tell you that we're going to do every single thing that is humanly possible to make sure that DACA recipients are protected. Mm -hmm. We're going to stand with them if we need to, whatever we need to do. We're on their side, we're with them. And as I said earlier, this is not just about a few people or you know 800,000 people. We have to look at this broad Mark. picture. This, as we just mentioned, this is about families, it's about children, it's about people who are working, they have their kids in our schools. and. They are in our schools, I should say. And what do we do? Do we just shut the door on them? No. So are we going to draft le legislation? Of course, in, in the future we will. Um, but again, we want to see what, what National does. But the DACA recipients here in Rhode Island can rest assured that Rhode Island stands with them and beside them. And we are going to do everything that we can to protect them. And this goes beyond the Black and Latino caucus. We happen to be uh, in front of this, uh, this issue because uh, a lot of this hits home. But most importantly, there's a lot of members in, in, in both chambers that are true believers of this. And we want to make sure that they're represented as well. Uh, we, we also want to say a lot of these, uh, the youth and their families are contributing members of 
our communities and society. They're paying their taxes, they're doing their fair share, and we need to make sure that the myths and a lot of the misconceptions mm -hmm. are also will be addressed throughout this process. Mm -hmm. I believe that as long as these issues continue to arise, they will, both of these types of bills will be present in our legislature. Our, my co-chair and, and colleague, uh, Representative Maldonado, Shelby Maldonado, introduced the bill protecting um, undocumented uh, uh, residents of our communities. And what we need to rest assured is that, we, again, we need to get beyond the myths, the misconceptions of what immigration is in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And we need to show how a lot of these individuals are contributing members. And it's not fair that we put families and people in harm's way and the impact it could have uh, on our state and our economy as a whole. And I, I just want to emphasize, um, it's not fair. And this is about justice. And no one should have to get up and to live in fear every single day, being afraid to go to work, being afraid to go to school, um, just for doing the right thing. You know, just to come here and to work and to live in, in, in freedom. And, 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 and people that come here, they're chasing the American dream, right? Mm -hmm. And for the DACA recipients, some of them came here, they didn't even know where they were going. You know, so um, we just can't treat people that way. That's not who we are. That's not how Rhode Island operate. We treat people with respect and we treat them with dignity, the dignity that is afforded to have a human being. And um, that's why we're here and we're standing here to say that we're on your side, we're with you, and we're going to fight all the way. Yes. So September 13th was the day that the Board of Hispanic Caucus Chairs uh, and its leadership decided that they were going to look to engage all the different states that are represented uh, within that particular caucus and make sure that we came in solidarity to bring the message straight to Congress and let them know that we are paying attention and we are urging them to have a quick, timely resolution to this matter. It's not fair, it's not right that people have to wait up to six months and feel the uncertainty of what could happen and, and think that they could be part of some raid at some point mm -hmm. in the next six months that will separate and destroy their families.